Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 157 of Be With Me. Now, yesterday we talked about uh, the phrase, the God to whom I belong, and the Lord sending an angel to Paul. Today, we're going to focus on this concept. Here it is, that sometimes God's mercy overflows. That is, God gives grace to those who don't deserve it. God gives grace to those who who may sail with people that God is giving grace to. All right, so I know the correct theology is that, in general, this is true, that uh, that man is to die and f- face judgment, We're to live once, face judgment, and it's kind of every man for himself, which is why we need the Lord so much. And... Uh, This is going to be an exception to that rule today. So this is the Lord granting all those who sail with Paul. So listen to the story. They're on a boat. It's it's a disaster. There's a big tempest. They've been on the boat for uh, days. It turns out they're going to be on the boat for weeks, being run by the wind and just at the mercy of the storm. Here it is. And then Paul gets an angel saying uh, that the Lord's going to, Uh, Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of God to whom I belong and to whom I worship. So this is from Acts chapter 27, verse 23. And then here's the, the story for today, verse 24. And he said, do not be afraid. You must stand before Caesar and behold... This is the angel talking. God has granted you all those who sail with you. God has granted you all those who sail with you. That's our phrase for today. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. When the 14th night had come, as we were being driven across the Adriatic Sea about midnight, the sailors suspected that we were nearing land. So they took a sounding and found 20 fathoms, a little for, that's 120 feet. A little further on, they took a sounding again and found 15 fathoms, 90 feet. And fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. As the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, the sailors, the staff, they had lowered the ship's boat into the sea under pretense of laying out anchors from the bow. Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the ship's boat and let it go. As day was about to dawn, Paul urged them all to take food, saying, today is the 14th day that you have continued in suspense and without food, having taken nothing. Therefore, I urge you, take some food, for it will give you strength, for it is not for not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. And they all were encouraged and ate food themselves. We were all 276 persons in the, in the ship. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, throwing out wheat into the sea. So here it is. Here's what... Uh, uh justice is getting exactly what you deserve mercy is getting less than you deserve and grace is getting more than you deserve and today we're this is a story about grace about a group of people who are getting more more than they deserve this is a graced class if you will the class of people that sail with paul so let's let's ask this is let's do a little character check and ask, do they deserve it? So first of all, they didn't listen to Paul back in twenty in verse ten. Paul says, "Don't let's don't go." I, I sense much loss, including our lives. The majority he gets voted down by the by the majority. They decide to take off anyway into the fall season, and uh, then their big tempest shows up, and they're in trouble. So then this angel of the Lord says, of the God to whom I belong, says that that nobody's going to die and the Lord is going to give all who sail with you. Then Paul says, in faith, I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told, not faith in the angel, faith in the God who sent the angel. Um, So 
we have this man who belongs to God in a very unique and kind of fantastic way. Paul, one of the you know unique Christians of all time, and so cool that he gets an angel. So now an angel has come to the ship. An angel has visited this ship like physically, and the guys are still in trouble. They've been throwing tackle overboard and all this. And now we find out that do the do the crew of the people of the ship do they deserve this? And we find out that they're going to abandon ship into a little boat and betray the people that they are charged with taking care of. So let's say there's 26 crew members. That means they're going to leave 250 people, civilians, non-sailors, on a ship that's falling apart with no rescue uh, lifeboat, if you will, and they're going to head for land themselves. In other words, they're going to murder, think about it this way, 250 people. That's what the crew decides to do. So then we find that Paul starts to boss the centurion and the soldiers, and, and they didn't obey him before, but now they o- obey him. My point is the people on the ship don't deserve, you know, the, he's going to say the people that get this, get their lives saved here are murderers. So they're getting more than mercy. They're getting grace. They're not getting justice. They're not getting mercy. They're actually getting grace more than they deserve. All right. So think about this. Think about the people that sail with you. So let's think about our families. Talk about the previous generation, parents and aunts and uncles, people from that generation, people from your current generation, your spouse or your brothers and sisters or your cousins, or maybe the next generation, your children, or maybe the generation of of that if you're old, grandchildren. Think about the people that sail with you in church. Think about people that sail with you in neighborhood that you see you know, walk, walking around, maybe people that's, that share your interest or your hobbies or people that are co-workers and associated with you. Or even if you want to get trite, how about your Facebook friends? Lord, so here's the prayer. Those people that we're talking about, to think about 276 people of your, you know, your closest 276 people. Sometimes the Lord gives grace to those who sail with you. Lord, may it be so. May you save parents and aunts and uncles and children and grandchildren and neighbors and and, and co-workers. Would you be so good? Would your grace extend to those people? Lord, will you please give grace to those who sail with us today? Amen.